Hold on one second. You can go ahead and begin. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us today on how to respond to requests for proposals. So I'm going to be going through uh, a few different items, but before we get into the uh, the actual uh, definitions and explaining and understanding the RFP process, I'm going to uh, go through a few bidding uh, opportunities and tips for you guys. Okay, can you all hear me? We can hear you now. You were on mute before. Okay, got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, let me just um, just backtrack a little bit. So uh, today we're actually reviewing the process on how to respond to requests for proposals, RFPs. And so before we get into the step-by-step uh, -step processes, I just wanted to uh, touch bases on tips for finding bid opportunities. So uh, bids are valued, bids valued over 100,000 and RFPs are publicly, publicly, publicly advertised in the Chicago Tribune. Uh, this, you wanna make sure that you made it, make a note of this because previously we advertised with the Chicago Sun-Times, uh, but within the past year, we uh, changed that to the Chicago Tribune. Uh, bids and RFPs are posted weekly to review and download on the City of Chicago Department of Procurement Services website. Uh, you can find this information at www.chicago.gov backslash bids and www.chicago.gov slash city slash en slash department slash dps slash i supplier slash current dash bids.html. Bid opportunities listed in the city of Chicago's department bid in Bonroom, 103 City Hall, 121 North LaSalle Street. See the City of Chicago buying form, as Jackie uh, mentioned, and register your company for DPS alerts on DPS website at www.chicago.gov backslash procurement. Um, here, I want to just make a note also, later on uh, in the presentation, there is a statement, a section that refers to uh, a sample RFP handout uh, for this presentation, we will not have a, hand, a handout, but I strongly encourage you all to register uh, on the DPS alert because there you'll actually be able to um, access current RFPs that you can use as sample uh, to walk through the step-by-step the -step process that we're going to discuss. Uh, another tip is attend pre-bid conferences. Network with to network with other potential bidders to partner on the bids uh, and to meet and uh, communicate with any subcontractors or submit as a prime. Uh, check the bid takeout list posted also on the DPS website. Okay. Use of RFPs versus competitive bids. Request for proposal. So method of procurement to hire a professional services consultant to implement a new project in various professional service disciplines. 
So an RFP is used when we're looking for um, an expert in a certain area. This could be something uh, similar to uh, property management services, financial services. So we use RFPs when the city does not have an in-house technical expert or resources to implement a project or provide the services. A competitive bid, this method of procurement is to purchase supplies, equipment, maintenance or repair services and construction services. So an example of this would be, uh, it could be anything from toilet paper to, uh, that's an example of a commodity or a work service. It could be a uh, services for landscaping. Uh, detailed bid specifications are prepared, structured as project specific with specific quantities, one time or blanket, indefinite quantity usage, AKA depends upon requirements, DUR, term agreements for goods and or services. Proposal page line items include the fine unit of measures and specific or estimated quantities. So an RFP versus competitive bid. So bid specification details every aspect of product or services. An RFP defines project objectives and scope of service parameters, but does not specify in detail every aspect of how to accomplish or perform the required services. The city seeks proposals from qualified vendors detailing their proposed plan to implement and complete the project. An RFP entails detailed evaluation of proposals by an evaluation committee based on evaluation criteria published in the RFP. The EC is comprised of various stakeholder departments. For a competitive bid, contract award is to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, meeting city specifications based on department review of bid tabulation and recommendation of award. For an RFP, vendor selection is to the highest rated or ranked respondent to the RFP, not lowest price. Price can be negotiated. MBE, WBE versus DBE goals. Minority business enterprise MBE, e, MBE, and Women Business Enterprise, WBE, participation goals typically are in all city funded projects. Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, DBE, participation goals may be required for state or federal grant funded projects. If DBE goals, local preference terms, example, a Chicago based business preference, MBE, WBE, et cetera, will be removed if prohibited, prohibited by a grant term. RFP proposal format. E-procurement electronic proposals. Proposals must be word searchable. Sections of proposals should be organized in subject matter sequence in the required content of proposal section of the RFP, each page should be numbered in a manner to be uniquely identified. Proposals must be clear, concise, and well organized. A redacted proposal must be submitted. The proposal content. So the, these are the, the various points that um, that each proposal should fall in, in line with. Uh, remember, you know, it's an evaluation team. You want to clearly, um, you know, you don't want to assume anything. So you want to try to lay everything out in an order and in a fashion that your information is easily uh, accessible and, and easily able to read. So a cover letter, 
uh, that's the, the way that I'm reading it here is how you want your items to lay out in the electronic uh, version. Uh, your cover letter, your executive summary, professional qualifications and specialized experience of respondent and team members. And you want to uh, be as detailed as possible. Professional qualifications and specialized experience of key personnel, implementation of work plan, cost proposal, MBE, WBE, or DBE plan. Uh, and this is where you also complete the, uh, the various schedules, Schedule C1 and D1. Uh, your financial statements, typically uh, there's a request for at least three years or equivalent uh, financial statements. Uh, an online EDS, uh, this is an economic disclosure statement certificate or filing, um, an affidavit, any legal actions that the city may, uh, may need to be aware of. You want to list out at least five years in most uh, RFPs. Uh, insurance requirements, um, make sure that you adhere to the insurance requirements that's a part of the RFP. The RFP evaluation criterion will vary depending upon the project, but the most common ones are as follows. Number one, professional qualifications and specialized experience, local availability of team, prime joint venture partners or subcontractors, if any, current and past performance record and references, certifications and or licenses. Number two, professional qualifications and specialized experience, local availability of key personnel, resumes, role on project plus organization chart, dedicated resources. Number three, implementation or work plan, number four, cost proposal, number five, MBE, WBE commitment. Uh, the standard is typically 25% uh, MBE and 5% WBE, uh, but depending on the type of service, those numbers may, um, may vary. Uh, DBE may apply to federally funded projects. Number six, financial statements. Number seven, compliance with law, ordinances and statutes, EDS certifications. Number eight, legal actions. Number nine, conflict of interest. And here, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about tips for preparing the RFP proposal. Read the entire RFP document. Follow proposal format and content instructions. No shortcuts. Don't assume that the city knows your firm. Uh, the next point, submit questions about the RFP in writing to DPS. Addendum will be issued to all RFP document holders on file with bid and bond run. Be responsive to RFP submitter requirements. Submit all required information in documents. Submit cost proposal in format provided for equitable comparison. Be a responsible vendor. Verify your company has the ability and the capacity to perform your, per your to perform, and your proposal meets each specified requirement. If a mandatory if a mandatory requirement, avoid taking exceptions to the requirement, it will result in your proposal rejection. Exhibit forms, which must be completed as part of the proposal submission, will vary depending upon the RFP. But the following exhibit forms are universal to every RFP company profile information, company references, client profile information, MBE, WBE, or DBE compliance plan, including Schedule C1 and D1 and or waiver, online economic disclosure statement and affidavit, which includes disclosure or, of retained parties with familiar relationships with elected city officials 
and department heads and other certifications. For online EDS instructions, you would need to go to http colon backslash slash web apps dot chicago dot gov backslash eds w e b. Uh, next point, insurance certificate required at contract award, but you definitely want to get yourself familiar um, with the requirements during the RFP process. Review city standard contract terms and conditions if attached as an RFP exhibit to determine if your firm, if your firm can perform under those terms and conditions. Verify existence of any addendum issued by city before submitting proposal. E procurement submissions. The city has transitioned from paper proposal submissions to online submissions of RFP, of RFPs and RFQs via e procurement. Vendors must register an I supplier to submit electronic submissions through e procurement. Proposals cannot be submitted via e procurement after the published due date or time. I supplier refers to the city's E procurement computer system for electronic bidding and providing contractors with access to contract ordering and payment information for their city contracts. Allow three business days to complete registration. Pay attention to the RFP instructions for proposal submission requirements. Cover letter must be signed by an authorized officer and acknowledged in in it and acknowledge any addendum issue. Make a checklist of all submitter requirements per proposal required content section to verify completeness of proposal before submitting to DPS. The e-procurement RFP document can be viewed and downloaded using the following link. www.chicago.gov backslash city backslash en backslash dets backslash dps backslash i supplier backslash current dash bids.html. Register an i supplier, and I'm not going to read uh, this, but you can see the uh, the link here. You can register. And all of these items can be found on the DPS uh, on the city of Chicago's website by going to the procurement department and you can see these various sections. Um, the addendum that the addendum is very important. You can also find this um, in e procurement once you uh, register through the I supplier. Uh, the pre proposal conference attendees. Um, so a list of the attendees will also be available for any networking opportunities that you may want to participate in. Uh, the takeout list, uh, again, it's on the City of Chicago's website. Uh, check out the uh, procurement site backslash TOL. Uh, the e-procurement workshop schedule, which you're a part of now, so you can also find that on the uh, procurement website and the e-procurement instructional documents as well, you can find on the uh, procurement site or the following link. Respondents to the RFP are posted on the website. No other information about proposals or evaluation is available until after the contract award process is concluded. All Freedom of Information Act FOIA requests received are held until after the contract award. The briefing meetings can be requested in writing to the CPO. Evaluation Committee evaluates proposals. Preliminary proposal assessment checklist for responsiveness. Number two, proposal evaluation. And number three, site visits, demonstrations, or presentations if necessary. Vendor selection and declination letters sent to respondents as applicable 
city, the city is not obligated to select any vendor. Contract award contingent on successful negotiation of terms and pricing. The city is not obligated to award a contract. RFPs may allow multiple awards by service category or separate projects. And that concludes our, our presentation. And now we're open to any questions that we're on. Thank you, Tahita. Um, if any of you have any questions, feel free to put it in the Q&A panel. Again, the Q&A panel is in the far right-hand corner of your screen. Click on those three dots or the um, word Q&A uh, and then type in your question. Right now, Tahita, I do not see any question um, you know, for this, but we'll give them a few minutes to uh, type in their questions in case they have some. Uh, is there anything that you want to give them as tips or last minute uh, or something to concentrate on when they're requesting for a proposal? Because this process is, um, you know, one of uh, the weightiest, pro you know, the kind of weight processes that, um, you know, we have at DPS uh, and we want to make sure that they are doing it correctly and making sure that um, they do it uh, efficiently and on time so that they can be included uh, in the consideration for bids and things. Um, so is there anything that you would like to add to what you have already presented here mm -hmm. as a great tip or something for them to take away with? Yes, that, that's a good point, uh, Jackie. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I would highly recommend, though the proposals are not available uh, on the uh, City of Chicago procurement site, what I recommend is actually going to our site and taking a look at some of the awarded contracts. Um, and specifically, I would say take a look at uh, the cost or the pricing because that information is out there once the contract is awarded to kind of give new vendors an idea of uh, the pricing or the, uh, the even the layout of how, um, you know, how to present certain sections. So though the whole proposal isn't available, there are certain sections that are part of the actual contract that I think that um, a new vendor or someone uh, who's, you know, it's your first time submitting to the city may be able to glean from some of the um, the contract, the awarded contracts. Okay. Uh, I am going to go on uh, to the questions. We have a few questions. The first question, um, I'm not sure if they're referring to DPS or DPE, but anyway, the question is, can you speak to uh, DPE plan? Um, I think they mean DPS. I'll give them a, a few seconds to respond in the Q&A panel that yes, they re, uh, they're referring to the DPS plan. Uh, if they can give us a little bit more information of what they're looking for there. I'll go on to the second question and come back to the first one in just a minute. Uh, why does a redacted version of the RFP need to be submitted? Yeah, so that's a good question. So in the event, as um, stated in one of the, the points that any dealings with the city of Chicago uh, we're a transparent um, government agency. So in the event that a four-year request is uh, requested for a particular RFP, information may be shared. And so it's important that you redact out any information that you would not want to be um, reviewed by the public, but because we are a public entity, four-year request is a part of what may uh, happen at any given uh, point for RFPs. Uh, under proposal content, I like to clarify on schedule C1 and D1. Okay, so when, and I guess I'm not understanding the question, what, what are they, they're looking for clarification or an understanding of what the schedules are. 
I'd like to know more about the MBE, WBE, or DBE plan schedule C1 and D1. Okay, so this is where um, the vendors, and I don't have a sample form in front of me, but this is pretty much where, let's say a prime is saying that they're gonna, um, you know, that they're going to, to have subcontractors that provide, um, it could be five MBE companies that are providing 5% of the services. So here is where their information will be laid out. So you'll, you'll lay out your information for all uh, minority certification information, what they're certified in. It, it's pretty much just kind of laying out the plan of who's providing what. It could be 5% woman-owned. So you'll have your, your woman-owned information there, any supporting certification, city of Chicago certification or the county certification. But this is the, the area where you're laying out who would actually be providing what when it comes to minority participation. And for those uh, people who are asking about where to find the presentation, Ronnie has uh, sent out the information answering uh, that question of where you can find the um, PowerPoint presentation after this uh, session and where you can find the recording of this session after this session. Uh, I ask that if the um, presentation you'd like to see or the recording you'd like to hear is of this week, we do not post them until Friday. So we are, uh, we do presentations on Wednesday and Thursday, and then we, we, we post both of Wednesday and Thursday's content on Friday. So it will be up as of Friday. So if you wanna check back then, you will be able to hear this one. Um, if there are any additional questions, um, I will take them now. Um, if not, right now I do not, uh, hold on one second. And let me just make sure that I do not have any additional, um, you know, questions that were asked uh, during this presentation. I guess not. So I will say thank you, Tahita, uh, for that great information that you partake uh, into uh, uh, today's workshop. Uh, we greatly appreciate those great tips and information that uh, we can secure now um, bids with that and go forth and know what is needed from us to uh, move forward. Um, I would like to say to the participants, thank you for coming on. Um, and uh, I hope that you got uh, the information you need to now help you uh, secure those bids and uh, learn uh, what is required of you to do business with the city of Chicago. Um, and uh, I say to you, stay safe, stay well. Uh, wash your hands, social distance, wear your mask, uh, get vaccinated, get your boost, whatever you need to do uh, so that one at one point in time of uh, this uh, year, we can get together in person and do these workshops so we can network with you in person. Uh, thanks so much to all of you. Uh, you know where to find our workshops. Go ahead and enroll in the DPS alerts. Go online and get your copy of the um, buying plan. And we will see you at the next presentation. Thanks so much, Tahita. Thank you, uh, Rodney. And we will see you all soon. Thank you. Tahita, you can go ahead and end your session.